Regular viewers will know that I'm rather a fan of the Manhattan and most of its many variations, and this is no exception. The Black Manhattan substitutes Amaro Averna in for the sweet vermouth in the classic. Despite its rather foreboding colour, is actually on the sweeter and more accessible end of the Amaro category. And if you're not sure what that is, then you should definitely check out our video on them here. This twist is credited to a bartender named Todd Smith who had it on the list in 2005 while working at Bourbon and Branch in San Francisco. Funnily enough, because most recipes call for rye, but you can definitely substitute in bourbon if you prefer. I just stick to something with a decent rye content for the spice, so um, bullet bourbon or buffalo trace would be good options. Averna is a Sicilian Amaro whose recipe is apparently unchanged since 1868, although I'm not really sure how you would verify that. As I mentioned, it is on the sweeter side, so you get lots of juicy orange notes with kind of licorice and caramel, as well as your soft herbal and bitter notes. This drink really changes depending on which ratio you use, so if you do stick to the classic Manhattan proportions of two parts whiskey to one part modifier, it's a really ballsy drink as the whiskey and the Amaro both very much make themselves known. Dialing back the Averna so it's more like three parts whiskey to one part Averna like I'm doing here provides something a little bit more like a regular Manhattan because um, obviously Vermouth not quite as kind of full on as the, as the Amaro. Um, so you've got the whiskey still very much being the star of the show but with an Oscar worthy supporting act. That said, once you're totally over to the dark side and you just love drinking Amari neat, this is actually a fun one to flip entirely. So you can do two parts of Averna to one part whiskey is a little bit lower ABV than your other ratios, but stiffer and drier than just drinking Averna on its own. If you don't have one or indeed either of the bitters, then don't stress. They do help to dry out and lengthen the cocktail, but Averna has plenty going on itself, so you don't miss them too much. The garnish is generally just a cherry, but if you do have a lemon or orange to hand, then just giving a little spritz of oils over the top will help to brighten it all up and bring out those citrus notes in the Amaro. First, we're gonna get our garnish ready. So um, I do happen to have some lemons here. So just gonna take a little coin, it really doesn't have to be very big, off the side of that. And obviously, given that it's not actually going in the drink, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, um, or even the pith on there. I mean, there's not much on there anyway, but it's not getting dropped in, so the bitterness doesn't um, isn't gonna kind of affect the drink too much. And then just make sure that you have your cherries to hand. These are some lovely ones that we got sent over by one of um, our viewers, so thank you very much, Ricardo. Glad to actually get to use these finally. And then we're gonna go in with a dash each of our bitters. So one dash of orange bitters one dash of Angostura bitters, 20 mils of Averna. Honestly, I think one of the reasons that I like Amaro so much is just like all the bottles are so beautiful. They're these really kind of very, yeah, regal looking, uh, almost quite 70s block letters and things. And then 60 mils of whichever American whiskey you're planning on using. Before we fill with ice, a quick reminder that you can find this and all of the cocktails we've ever made at withcaradivine.com. There are even downloadable recipes and lots of pretty pictures to get you salivating. But for now, we've got a drink to chill, so I'd better get some ice in this glass. Delicious. Now we're just gonna hold your julep strainer back. This is usually served up, same as a Manhattan. You can absolutely serve it on the rocks if you prefer. Um, and it's usually in a coupe glass, but I just quite like this little fat boy whiskey glass. We're gonna go for that today. Give your lemon a quick little fold over the top. Then that can get chucked away. And then we're just gonna pop a little cherry in the bottom. Nice little surprise for you to find at the end of your drink when it's thoroughly soaked through. The Black Manhattan, so now you know. Give this one a go. I mean, it's about as black as the white Negroni is white, to be honest. It's still basically the same color as a regular Manhattan, but we'll see if it tastes a little darker. I do really like that 
yeah, that little kind of lift that you get from the oils. Um, and you can kind of really smell the amaro backing that up as well, like that quite uh, lifted citrus. It's really yummy. I mean, especially if you maybe generally, like funnily enough, as much as an amaro is bitter, um, the upfront kind of quite like caramel sweetness is really there as well. So it actually makes it a little bit more, to me actually a little bit more approachable maybe than, you know, some Manhattans where the vermouth, as much as it is a sweet vermouth, it's just like a little bit kind of thinner, not quite as present. So the whole cocktail is a little bit drier. This is, I know I keep saying the word, but it's really quite juicy. And then, yeah, you've got that, that nice kind of licorice and herbal note as well coming through at the end. And with the bitters in there too, it definitely goes on goes on for days. It's a cocktail with legs, that's for sure. I like this one. 